Okay, we're back live here at VMworld 2013. This is Silicon Angles, the Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the advanced extract the signal from the noise. This is day two live in San Francisco at the Moscone uh, Lobby South. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle. I'm joined with my co-host Dave Vellante at wikibon.org. Hi everybody, Jim McBride is here. He's the chief cloud architect at Express Scripts. Express Scripts is a very interesting company. Uh, we're talking about billions of prescriptions, millions of, of, of customers, uh, a company that's growing, large market cap, made some big moves and acquisitions. Jim, welcome to theCUBE, thanks, thanks for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, so the Ex Express Scripts model is, is pretty interesting and you obviously have built the cloud to support the, the growth of, uh, of the business, but talk about the, the company, it's interesting, it's got a, you got a holding company, you've made some acquisitions. Talk about the, the, the organization. Ultimately, Express Scripts is a pharmacy benefit manager. You know, we're about making the use of prescription drugs safer and more affordable for over 100 million Americans. Uh, as you said earlier, uh, last year alone, we pro uh, managed over uh, 1.4 billion scripts. So, you know, under the hood, we're an IT company and we're using data to, you know, drive decisions that uh, ultimately provide uh, the most optimal and cost-effective health outcomes. Yeah, and the business is, is growing very rapidly, right? You've made some, some big acquisitions, some other tuck-ins as well, which obviously uh, always adds to the complexity <laughs> of, of your, your infrastructure. So, so talk a little bit about um, that infrastructure and how you service a, a, a billion plus <laughs> prescriptions. It's a, it's a rapidly moving and changing target. And as the business demand comes in for whatever the, uh, the needs of the day are, we have to be able to rapidly respond to that. And we have to be able to rapidly respond to that in a very consistent, uh, stable, scalable, and secure manner. So for us, our journey to cloud was about providing that capability um, you know, rapidly uh, and being able to reduce time to market at the same time. So you know, you've got um, integrations happening, we've got new product rollouts, and being able to consistently deliver that infrastructure um, at speed and quality was our challenge, and, and that's what we're doing today. Jim, people are always talking about the cloud for, for decades, and uh, we, we got cloud washing back in the day, but you know, there are a lot of people who did do a lot of cloud architecting, and you know, I was going to at Facebook and then look at these modern apps, and they say, oh, apps, new modern apps scale cloud style. Sure. Cloud style meaning, you know, on demand, all this automation. <laughs> Legacy apps don't scale cloud style. So sure. what does that mean to you? I mean, as a cloud architect, you have to look at the infrastructure and deal with legacy, look at kind of a clean sheet of paper on one end, but sure. yet looking back at pre-existing conditions of the enterprise. What does cloud style mean to you as a cloud architect, and what are you trying to accomplish to get apps to scale cloud style? I, th I think it's being able to scale at will horizontally at the different uh, tiers. And your point, for legacy applications, you have to provide a bridge to the future. It's easy to do greenfield design. It's hard to provide a bridge for your legacy applications to get to that, cap that horizontal scale capability. So it's about looking for wins in the infrastructure, uh, working with your application development partners, figure out where you can leverage those technologies and build those into the roadmaps and get those incremental wins towards your ultimate goal. How hard is it? I mean, is it, <laughs> I mean, I mean Give a scale of one to 10, how painful is it? It, it? Both in terms of pulling it off with the tech, the personnel, and also selling the vision to management. I, I think the good news is the technology is, is good, right? And it's not typically a technology problem, it's typically a people and process problem. And getting people to buy in and understand the vision and where you're going and what's possible, and, and for them to kind of um, get on board with that. So from a technology standpoint, it, not super difficult. From a people and process standpoint, uh, it can be very challenging. You've got to have that executive sponsorship or Early, and you've got to find your partners in the enterprise that you can work with to deliver that value. Yeah, people, practitioners like yourself always say that you know, technology comes and it goes, that's the easy part. And it's really not that easy. But, but relative to the people in process, it's, 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 it, well, those are much harder. So, let's talk a little bit about, everybody talks about IT transformation. You guys have clearly transformed. Sure. So did you go through a sort of formal, was your CIO lead, hey, we, we have this transformation project, did it just happen? Talk about that, because CIOs today, the discourse is transformation. Sure. Did you guys explicitly and deliberately talk about that and transform, or was it just part of your strategic plan? We talk about transformation often in Express Scripts, and I think it's kind of core to our culture. Um, what we were trying to do is what I think most organizations are doing, which is more with less, right, and, and being able to scale efficiently 
differently. So it wasn't a it wasn't a um, outright goal to transform. It was a, a goal that we have to be more efficient with the resources that we do have. So for us, cloud was about you know looking at the upcoming business demands and the capabilities that we were going to have to bring forth as IT and figuring out how are we going to do that in a in a um, in a consistent, scalable, secure manner. And, and cloud's how we got there. So what what does your cloud look like? And, you know, on, Take the covers off a little bit. Sure. Tell us what, you know, paint a picture. Um, at the at its base, it's a uh, uh, VMware ESX uh, hypervisor running on top of Cisco UCS hardware and a uh, EMC uh, storage backend. Right. So it's um, you know it's pretty classic um, you know cloud what people would expect cloud as an infrastructure today. And then we've wrapped our custom development around it uh, that provides our elastic scale and the ability to deploy our development patterns that are specific to ESI on top of that hardware stack. So you kind of build your own little reference architecture there, it's not a converged, you know, out of the box, That's single correct. SKU type of deal. You went with sort of a roll your own approach, right? We, we went to the market at the time and yeah. came back and kind of used the best of what was available yeah. and mixed that with the things that allow us to use our proprietary technology to its fullest extent. So, when you set out on this, I mean obviously you're in an industry that's, you know, you got to be you know, careful, it's sensitive, you got HIPAA, sure. and so forth. So, um, how did you architect, you know, the cloud architect, how did you architect what were the elements of the architecture and, and how did you architect security and, and other governance factors in? Um, it, you have to start from the very beginning, right? And we have very strict controls in place today. So it was about figuring out how to uh, model what we do today inside that cloud architecture. And it, it's not terribly different from what we do today. It's just a lot faster and a lot more consistent as we remove humans from the process. Oh, okay. Now, um, so, so did you kind of do this yourself? Did you enlist outside services? Talk about that a little bit. So uh, we did a lot of it ourselves. We also partner heavily with uh, different technology partners, including EMC from a consulting standpoint, to help us understand how to best maximize the investment we have in, in their equipment. Okay, so, so th their role was really to, to help you figure out how to best deploy their hardware and software. To meet our needs and, in, in and our then, cloud structure. And then did you use other consultants to, you know? We, we certainly augment uh, our core competencies with uh, different, um, you know, uh, skill providers. But uh, right. by and large, it was an ESI-driven effort. Yeah, okay. Jim, what about automation? I love, first of all, I just tweeted, I couldn't uh, resist tweeting your comments. Scaling at will horizontally is, is really cloud style, I totally agree. Sure. Uh, automation's another one, right? And yep. well, API, API-centric uh, data center's one, but Automation is really important. Can you talk about how you look at that and how you tackle that problem? Yeah, for us, um, you know, you can't automate it if you can't if you can't document the process. So for us, getting the organization to go through the, the rigor of defining the process of what they're trying to do today, uh, so we can talk about that uh, commonly, and then automating it with the goal of re reducing the handoffs and reducing the human interaction. Um, that's where we find the most value. So you know, there's there's a lot of non um, glamorous work to go through and understand the legacy processes as they exist today, analyzing those processes and figuring out how to best automate those for the best result. And it's, it's different by company, so it's really challenging, right? It's like, you can't just put boilerplate process and say this is the automation software. That's it's got to right. be agile. It, and, it, and iterative, right? So we don't try to bite off too much at once and you do come at it from an iterative process, constantly refining and working with those stakeholders to make sure things are relevant. Yeah, Dave and I always talk about tech athletes when we're on the queue. We like to talk to like, uh, guys like you who are actually like tech athletes. You're doing stuff that's really cool and hard and, uh, and interesting. So I want to I want to ask you, a lot of folks are going through this process for the first time. What makes a winner in this area? Because a lot of people are, are coming in and being forced in, top line growth pressure and re-architecting their architectures for cloud style and mobile style and big data style, security style, kind of a new way. What's a winner look like in your mind? What's a winning approach? What's a winning personality? What's a winning persona? I, I think that winning persona is about, um, you know, taking the best of what's available from the technology you know, in the market and figuring out how to make it relevant and consumable inside of your enterprise. Cloud is a, is a big step, it's a big journey, and it's not something that you can enter into lightly, and it's also not something, to your point earlier, that boilerplate always works. You've got to figure out how to customize it for what you do in your industry, your vertical, and then more specifically for your culture and how you can adopt that method of work. When vendors come in and knock on your door, say, hey, I got some stuff to sell you, because that's what they do, that's what sure. they do, right? What, what, what makes you go, I like you, I don't like you? What's, what's the What's the wrap that gets your attention? Transparency, open, uh, the ability to orchestrate their capabilities via a coherent set of APIs uh, that allow us to, to put it to work for us versus how they're typically trying to sell it in. Do you guys, I mean, in the old days, remember old days, 10, 15 years ago, 
startups usually couldn't get that enterprise customer because they didn't have a track record. Now startups can be both on cloud. A lot of enterprise startups, we were just talking the other day, young kids under 30, starting up cloud-based uh, services companies and, and tech companies. Do you look at startups and, and, and how do you evaluate a startup? If, if you look at startups, do you buy from startups? Do you look at startups? Or is there a threshold uh, hurdle? Uh, we certainly don't rule them out. I think we're very interested in uh, you know, the leading technology, what's the best solution, uh, you know, who's got the better mousetrap. There's certainly concerns at enterprise of our size that, of stability and the ability for them to you know, be around when we call and do need some help. But we certainly will, uh, will include them in the survey when we're looking for a technology solution. So what do you think of the whole VMware you know, transformation here? Speaking of transformation, you got a company that you know, really changed the way in which IT infrastructure is managed, <clears throat> and now it's going after you know, the cloud, the hybrid cloud. Sure. What does that mean for you guys? Is that an imperative for you to get to hybrid cloud? And I want to ask about end user computing as well. Yeah, I think so. Uh, hybrid cloud and, and having, the, having choice, right? And the ability to deploy uh, your business patterns on top of a variety of um, topology providers or cloud providers and being able to figure out what the best fit is for your use case, whether that's based strictly on price or capability, uh, government certification, physical distance. There's a lot of different things that you would use to describe who the optimal provider might be. And VMware providing the tools to help companies and enable enterprises to make that choice and, and, and uh, leverage those providers, I think is an important uh, move. Okay, so, so is hybrid cloud you know, in your future or is it in your present? Yeah, it's definitely on our roadmap. We're doing POC work right now with a number of different providers to kind of uh, create a uh, normalized set of patterns that we can deploy on top of uh, multiple different topology providers. What's the driver there, Jim? Uh, it's, it's about flexibility, uh, agility, again, further reducing time to market, uh, not having to deal with the replenishment cycle uh, that we talked about, you know, there's been a lot of talk about here at VMworld. Um, uh, you know, that, that true horizontal scale at will includes the ability to have the infrastructure present to service, to service that demand, and having the ability to choose from several different providers gives you the optimal cost point. Okay, so you're, you've got your core apps you know, running in your cloud, that's stable. So you're going to use the hybrid cloud for additional growth, new projects, new uh, test and dev stuff? All of the above, mm -hmm. and we're currently evaluating what is the best fit and what that specific roadmap looks like. Right now we're baking out the technology. So, you know, there's this, there's this uh, vision that, that guys like VMware, obviously EMC putting forth as well, that I'm going to have common governance policies, compliance, GRC, et cetera, and it's going to essentially be able to move apps and maybe even move data from my on-premise to, to sure. off-premise. How real is that? Uh, particularly the data piece, because sure. you don't really want to move data around. And, sure. And, and I just want to get a practitioner's viewpoint on that. Uh, it's very challenging, right? Uh, for the very reasons you laid out, uh, the, the laws of physics that dictate how fast we can move those large data sets between those sites. Um, I think it can be real. I don't know that there is a wrap solution that's ready today. We're certainly interested in that, and that will be key, uh, a key part of our future hybrid uh, strategy. But in, until um, you're able to effectively move large data sets inter provider, um, and I don't think it's real yet. And, and, and is how appealing is that sort of homogeneity, if you will, of the hypervisor and the surrounding management tools? You know, versus say the simplicity and the flexibility of you know swiping a credit card on Amazon. I think for us, it's extremely. Uh, it's extremely interesting. For me, I, I want us to get up the stack. I want the industry to get up the stack and normalize out the infrastructure. The machines aren't important, right? What's important is the business value that's being delivered. And the more, if you will, opaque we can make that solution so that we stop caring about the individual piece parts that create the subordinate infrastructure, the more we're focusing on delivering the business value, the better off we all are. And, and of course, you, you hear a lot about you know, virtualizing the network, virtualizing storage. Sure. It's non-trivial. <laughs> you know? Absolutely. I mean, compute wasn't trivial. Sure. And storage and networking are much harder. So, um, again, from a practitioner's perspective, you hear the messaging, uh, obviously it resonates. W what are your thoughts in terms of when you expect to be able to implement something like that? Um, you know, we're certainly things that we're looking at now. Um, and it'll, it'll follow a similar curve, I would imagine, to what we did in server virtualization. It'll take us a couple years to get really comfortable with that at a, at a generalized enterprise level. But I'm expecting for that to become much more mainstream in the next 12 months. John was asking about startups before, and, and one of the things that's hard for startups is, is the services piece. Sure. <laughs> Talk about services and the role it plays in your sort of decision making. Um, it can be critical, it depends on what you determine your core competencies are and the ability to go to the market and get uh, effective partners that can help you deliver on that cloud strategy is mm -hmm. really critical. Awesome. All right Jim, well listen, really appreciate you coming on theCUBE. John? Thanks for coming on, I really appreciate it. I'd like to hear you in the trenches and getting the, the, the practitioner view. 
We hear from the, uh, the folks that, that are building the technology. It's always great to hear uh, from the folks who are implementing cloud. This is theCUBE, day two live in San Francisco for VMworld 2013. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE Wikibon. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. Right back with Chuck Hollis from VMware, Chief Strategist, not EMC, although that's what it says on his badge. We're going to talk to Chuck, always a great guest. Uh, we're going to hear his, his angle on what's going on at VMware and in the ecosystem right after the short break.